Welcome back. This is episode five of my franchise hockey manager seven playthrough as the Boston Bruins. And I was, I'm very excited to do this uh, episode. I uh, finished the last one a couple of days ago and I've been sitting on this for about 48 hours now and, and I've just sort of been biding my time until enough time had passed where I felt like I could record another video. So uh, that video is now and we're going to do the off season. But, but before we do the off season, a lot has transpired since we talked last. So the Pittsburgh Penguins won the Stanley Cup. They defeated the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, I believe it was in six games. Let's take a look. Five games. The Kings, uh, Pittsburgh beat the Kings in five games as a number three seed. If you go back and look, Columbus beat Washington, the number one seed, uh, and Detroit beat Toronto. So the two, I guess, four seeds or seven and eight seed, whatever you want to call them, beat the one and the two. Uh, Florida beat Detroit. Pittsburgh beat Columbus. Columbus, uh, and then Pittsburgh beat Florida over in the West. Calgary and Winnipeg were the number one seeds, and they both lost as well to Minnesota and the Kings. Vegas is the, I don't know if that's the three, or I don't know if that's the the five or the six seed, but they beat Vancouver and Chicago beat St. Louis. The Kings beat the Blackhawks. Vegas beat Minnesota. The Kings beat Vegas. And the final was the Pittsburgh Penguins. Four games to one over the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of delete these one at a time. Um, the United States won the World Championship. They beat Canada 4-1 to one in the final. Uh, we had three Bruins participating in the World Championships, McAvoy, Marchand, and Bergeron. Sorry about that. Got to shut that off. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. All right. So uh, top, um, and I'll show you this up here actually. And where is it? Uh, is it this one? Yeah. All right. So I'll delete that one and show you this one. So here is the final draft evaluation uh, for the upcoming season. A lot of really talented players. And I have a strategy. I think we're going to pick right around here, somewhere five through seven, depending on the lottery. Uh, I have a strategy. Owen Powers set to go number one. Luke Hughes, two. Brent Clark, three. So three defensemen, one, two, three. The first forward, Kent Johnson out of Michigan. Uh, expected to go fourth, Aturati, fifth, and then Dylan Gunther, uh, sixth which again, I think is about where we're going to pick. Uh, our development report for the end of the month, uh, Alex Newhook. A lot of young players on here have gotten better, which is nice. Alexander Texier, uh, Dan Vladar, both with the big club. Uh, Patrice got a little bit worse. No big deal there. We'll take a look at the award winners. So the Rocket Richard Trophy went to Austin Matthews, 51 goals. Jake Gensel won the Art Ross. Uh, David Riddich won the Jennings Trophy. Evgeny Dadanoff won the Lady Bing. Ryan Suter won the Bill Masterson. Franz Nielsen of Detroit picks up the Mark Messier Leadership Award. Ovi wins the Ted Lindsay. Uh, NHL all, uh, top uh, uh, all-star teams, first team and second team. Malcolm Subban picks up the NHL first team uh, honors with his season with the Blackhawks, 33-17 and 17 on the season. Chris Letang, Mark Giordano, Ovi, Nathan McKinnon, and Mitch Marner make up the first team. Second team, Andre Vasilevsky, Seth, Seth Warensky, Zach Warensky, and Seth Jones from Columbus. Jake Ensel, Steven Stamkos, and Blake Wheeler is your second team. The all-rookie team, Ilya Sorokin of the Islanders, Kale Clegg, uh, Sebastian Ajo, Kirill Kiprizov, who was traded midway through the season from Minnesota to Detroit. More on Kaprizov in a second. Quinton Byfield and Nick Merkley make up your all-rookie team. Hart Trophy winner Nathan McKinnon 
McKinnon with 94 points in 82 games, 39 goals, 55 assists. Jake Gensel won the Conn Smythe as the playoff MVP after putting up 109 points in 82 games this past season. Kiprasov won the Calder Trophy, and he was traded midway through the season. I wonder if that's ever happened before. But he was at 44 points in 61 games for Minnesota, put up a point a game with Detroit, finished with 62 points in 78 games for uh, the Red Wings and the uh, Minnesota Wild. Uh, Chris Letang of Pittsburgh won the Norris. Alexander Barkov won the Selkie. Malcolm Subban picks up the Vezina. Steve Eiserman is the executive of the year. Jack Adams Trophy went to Jeff Blasshill of Detroit. And those are all of your awards. I guess I'll just delete them all at the end. Um, Rasmus Dahlin and the Sabres weren't able to agree on a contract, so he will become a restricted free agent. I fully expect him to re-sign, um, but he is a stud. So we'd be foolish to not at least look at what it would cost us. I believe it'll probably cost us... Um, couple of firsts in a second, but we will see. Uh, Montreal fired Mark Bergevon and Claude Julien, so they'll be on the lookout for a new front office. And the NHL uh, free agency preview. There are quite a few positive or really good names on this list. None bigger than Alex Ovechkin. A couple of good goalies, which is important for us. Nashville actually has Pekarene and... Um, uh, Juicy Saros as free agents. I believe Saros is probably going to be restricted. So, But we have some options here for some uh, older defensemen to kind of tide us over till ours are ready. Uh, Pekka Rene and Frederick Anderson. Uh, Jacob Vrana is also an... I don't know if he's unrestricted or... Let's take a look. He's a restricted. So uh, we probably won't be making a move there, but... And I could go through this. I went through this yesterday, and it took me like an hour to go through all this. But there are some big names on here. Winnipeg's got Adam Lowry, three-and-a-half star. Um, Ilya Samsonov, again, probably restricted. Yep. Most of these guys are going to – most of the, the high potential, low-ability guys are going to be um, restricted free agents. Philip Grubauer is available, so we could pick him up. Uh, to replace Tuca, which is the exact opposite of what happened in Colorado. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is available. Um, and there were a couple of defensemen on here that we could look at to, to help us as well. You can see, actually, let's look. Saros is restricted, yeah. So we could be looking at, um, as I mentioned, Pekka Rene uh, to be our new uh, starting goaltender. We will see, though. Uh, and so that is all of the stuff that has happened to this point. Um, if we look at, we're going to go to the next day, which is going to end the season and it should give us free agency. It should give us the, um, the draft lottery, uh, as well as the NHL draft. So I will skip ahead until tomorrow and we'll see what it brings us. All right, it is the first, and a lot of people have retired. I hope none of these are ours. If they are, well, well we, we got to take a look at it anyway. So, uh, let's see. Craig Anderson retired. Artem Anisimov. Anisimov retired. Nick Bonino. Bonino. Big Z retired after one year with Tampa Bay. Played pretty well in that year. Seven, 12 points in 55 games. Alexander Edler, Jarmelson, Miku Koivu, David Krejci retired, only played three games with Carolina this year and then retired in the offseason. Patrick Marlowe, Patty Marlowe, finally retires, scored nine points in 51, se in 51 games for San Jose this year. They retired his number. Matthew Perot, Brad Richardson, Jason Spezza, Derek Steppen, Nate Thompson, Joe Thornton finally retired. Played one season with Toronto, scored 10 points last year. Travis Zajac, Casey Sezikis, retired at age 30. Wow. Wow, okay. That's a bit of a surprise. Riley Nash, Michael Stone, Alex Chason. Is that Bobby Ryan? Derek Ryan. Derek Ryan retired. Carl Sloterberg. Pierre-Edward 
Belmare, Justin Abdelkader, Devin Dubnik, Brian Elliott, Viteri Filip Filipula. God, to get that out. Uh, Jimmy Howard, Henrik Lundqvist, James Reimer, uh, Patrick. Oh, let's see, Pekka Rene didn't retire, but they retired his number. Mike Smith, Carter Hutton. Wow. So a lot of goaltenders retired. That's not great, but it happens. Development report. Patrice dropped a little bit more, but that's okay. Uh, great. We signed a new local broadcast deal. Board confidence update. He's unhappy. You want us to be in the playoff race. And then payroll is what it is. Let's see anything. None of this is important. These are all radio deals. I'm not sure how that affects us. Joel Quenville was fired, even though the team made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Oh, he retired. Okay, he retired. Paul McLean retired. Jeremy Jacobs is no longer our owner. So who's our owner now? Do we have an owner? Oh, Tom McVeigh retired. Svenake Svensson retired as well. So we are going to have to pick up a couple of new scouts. Don Sweeney, named general manager of Nashville. Lou Lamorello uh, retired from the Islanders. Uh, so we're going to have to... Uh, do we have a new owner? We'll have to take a look and see what uh, what what he looks like. Uh, nobody else here are ours. These are all other teams. So let's quickly take a look at our scouting. Make sure we are still loaded up across the board. Okay. We could use a scout in Western Europe. But I'm not really concerned. I'm not really fussed about Spain or France or England. Um, I've got somebody in Switzerland. We're all good up here. And then Eastern Europe, the Eastern Bloc. I think I could use somebody else in here to kind of fill out. Uh, let's look for Poland. Uh, that's higher scouts. No, no, that's not what I, I can do it wrong. Here we go. Where is the Polish flag? Isn't it just red? That's Czech Republic. Uh, do we not have anybody? That's This is all Czech Republic. I guess it doesn't matter, though. If I put somebody else in there, it should fill some of this in, especially if I get somebody from the Czech Republic right here. So let's go to Czech Republic. My chair is really squeaky. I need to do something about that. I'm sure you guys can hear that. I'm almost positive you guys can hear that, but that's fine. Um, here, Peter Sommer is very... Oh, here we go. Great and very good. Adam Cerny. Cool. Yep, that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, I'm all set in Switzerland. Do I, I don't care about Germany, do I? No. All right. Um, but I think, do I need to change? I don't need to change either of my advanced scouts either. All right, so we're okay scouting-wise. Uh, it is Janu or July 1st. We have draft order announcement is July 6th. The entry draft is the 7th. So it looks like we're going to be looking at free agency first. Let's go to the free agent center. Where is my coffee? It's over here. All right, so we have $23 million to spend. And we talked about picking up a goalie, and we talked about picking up a uh, defenseman. Those were kind of the two areas that... Um, did Pekka Rene retire? That's Alexander. Did he retire? No, he didn't. Why can't I? Oh, I guess maybe he did retire. Yeah, oh, he did right there, right in front of me. Well, that sucks. He was the one I wanted to go after. All right, that's fine. We still have some options. I don't want to look at my 
these are the upcoming free agents for this season. So we will have some people that we'll have to uh, talk to throughout the season, but I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, oh, come on. Free agent center. Go to the right place. All right. So let's start by looking at goalies. We do want to bring in a starting goaltender. And there are some options here. Anderson, Grubauer, Riddich, Mrazik, and I'm not sure who Kovar is. Jacob Kovar coming over from the KHL. And then some two-star Jonathan Bernier, John Gillies. Um, so, all right. I mean, Anderson's probably... Uh, sorry, I had to... I wearing a... Bruins beanie from just having recorded my Bruins video and it was making my head hot. So, um, all right, so Frederick Anderson. Uh, I think Anderson and Riddich are probably my two options here. Let's see what they want. So he wants five at 6.2, and Riddich wants four at 6.2. Riddich might be the way to go. Four at 6.5. So that's what, 24 years, 26 million. And Anderson wants five at 6.2. He's older, coming off of an injury. So he wants 30, about 32 over five. And Riddich wants 20, 25 over four. I think Riddich is probably the way to go. And I think, oops, meet demand. I think the option is, I think let's just go 6-5. Let's, no, let's, so we want 6-4. So let's use that for all. Let's bump this up, not 10,000, 100,000. Let's go there. Let's do that. Let's do four years at 24, 25, tw four years at 26.5 for 28-year-old David Riddich. Hopefully that, uh, that gets us what we need as a starter to replace Tuca. And now let's take a look at defensemen. So Adam Pellich, Brandon Montour, Alec Martinez, David Savard, Ryan Murray, Darren Dietz coming from the KHL. Very, you know, he's a defensive-minded defenseman, but those are pretty offensive numbers. I have no scouting on him at all. That's a bit of a problem. What does he want? I mean, if he wants cheap money, it might be worth it. And that seems like a no-brainer for those types of numbers. If we meet his demand, he wants a no-trade clause. Let's look at our depth chart. So he's a right, uh, right defenseman, right defenseman, right defenseman. Uh, Grizzlick is a left defenseman. Vakanainen is a left defenseman. He's a right defense. He could technically both. We definitely need Well, we need depth is what we need because most of this depth is pretty bad or really, really young. Um, Connor Timmons we picked up uh, at the trade deadline. Alright. So I think we pick up Dietz and then we make a run at a higher quality defenseman. I think we do that. Oops. And then let's go back and look at defensemen again. Oh, these are all restricted. We gotta take off the restricted. I'm not interested in restricted right now. Let's look at ability. Adam Pellich, man, look at that 18 defense. What does he want? Three years at 
that seems pretty solid to pair him on that top line with McAvoy. So 5.1, bump that to, let's, let's do 5.25. Five. Five, five. Five seven fifty. So that's three years at about seventeen million, and he wants a no movement clause. That's fine. I'm, I would be happy with this. All right, so we got about ten million left to spend so far. A goalie and two defensemen. Let's take a look at the forwards. I know Ovi's on there. He's probably only going to want like a one-year contract. Let's just see what he wants. 10 year, one year, 10.4 million. I'll stay away from that. Um, Nugent Hopkins. And he only wants three years as well. Three years at 5.1. Adam Lowry wants three years at 4.9. And I think. Depth at. We're pretty good depth-wise at right wing. Uh, we're okay depth-wise at center. I mean, if Newhook continues to improve, he'll be our number one center. Patrice has got another couple years before we need to worry about replacing him. Coyle will probably be our number two center this year. Corrali and Frederick. Could use some depth at left wing. Definitely use some depth at left wing. But how much do we want to really spend? We got Marshawn and DeBrusque as our top two left wings. Pasternak, Kasha, Craig Smith. I mean, we're set down the right, I think. Uh, especially with Dominic Bach and some of our other prospects here. Um, left wing... Left wing and center is where I think we need the most help. So if we filter out the right wings, see what's available. Let's get rid of the restricteds again. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Okay, that was a bit concerning. Um, all right, so Thomas Tatar, Tanner Pearson, Zach Aston Reese, good defensive forward. Riley Goodrow, good defensive center. Paul Stastny, he's getting up there in age. Let's see, what would he want? Two years, six and a half million. Kind of feel like taking a shot at somebody here. Adam Lowry might not be bad for that third line, either center or left wing. He's 28. What else is available? Alex Iafalo. Juhar Kyra. I'm not even gonna, I believe that's right. Zach Hyman. Andrew Cogliano, Matt Calvert, Tyler Ennis, Brandon Saad, Scott Lawton, Jordan Martinook, Andrew Kopp. Could bring Joachim Nordstrom back. I don't really want to. Blake Coleman. These are all kind of defensive defensemen. and I mean, that's probably not bad. I mean, I don't think offensively we're going to be in terrible shape with our top two lines but I mean I could just go all in and you know go for Nugent Hopkins and just try to pile the uh, the uh, the offense on um, he's an offensive forward what did he want three years at five one he wants a no trade clause could I sign him to a three-year deal for like five, five, and get rid of the no-trade clause? My guess is he probably won't like that. I think he probably wants the no-trade. 
Yeah, he likes the offer, but he wants a no-trade clause. Um, is there anybody that doesn't want a no-trade clause? Adam Lowry doesn't want a no-trade clause, but he's not the offensive weapon that Nugent Hopkins is. I mean, would he be okay on the third line? If we put, I mean, a consistent goal scorer. He's 28, so he would be 31 by the time the contract ran out. I mean, if he was putting up 40 points a game for three years, would that be worth $5 million a year? I think we're going to do this. I think we're going to see if we can get him at five. Give him the no trade clause and see if he takes that. Nope. Okay, so he, he's now bumped it up to five, five, because that's what I offered him before. So I'm going to step away here. And Paul Stastny. He's going to be out for three months, and he's more of a playmaker. He doesn't score as many goals, and he's going to be out for three months. If we brought Stastny on, where would we put him? That's the question. Because he's purely a center. So he would have to go there. And do I go Stastny, Smith, and Texier on that third line? Or do I make Stastny my number two center and go Coil, Smith? That might be the play. If I make Stastny my number two center, move Coil down to the third line, Corrali down to the fourth and then figure out this third line left wing uh, during spring training or during uh, training camp. I think that might be that might be the play. Yeah, I think that's the play. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. If you think I should have gone after somebody else, but I think I'm going to go after. Eric Stahl. And last season is at age 36, 35 points in 67 games. He is durable. And what does he want? Oh, that's, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to go one year for Eric Stahl. Give him, we'll even give him 4.5. If he's great, then it's a steal. If he's not great, then we can move him because it's not a no trade clause. So, all right. So that is hope. I mean, and and any one of these players could end up signing someplace else. But David Riddich, four years at six point uh, four years at six point six. Darren Dietz, two years at one point one eight. Adam Pellick, three years at five five. And Eric Stahl, one year at four point five. So let's continue ahead and see what happens. All right, so let's see what ends up happening here. Uh, Eric Stahl, we were able to pick up Eric Stahl for that one year at $4.5 million. Paul Stastny signed with the Red Wings. What did he get? Just out of curiosity. One year at six and a half. Okay, well, that's not terrible. Nugent Hopkins signed with Columbus. Three years at 5-1, which is what he asked for. Okay. We picked up Adam Pellick, which is fantastic. Darren Dietz uh, doesn't look like he signed yet. Adam Lowry signed with the Ducks. We signed, picked up David Riddich, which is awesome. So we have our new starting goaltender, who last year was only 42 and 13 with a 9.22 goals against average. So uh, he was really good. Uh, Grant Hutton traded to the Blue Jackets. Uh, trade between Washington and Toronto. Victor Rask traded to Arizona. 
looking for something substantial here. Nothing there. Uh, Anders Bjork is on the move again. Played 19 games for Colorado last season. Scored, did, picked up two assists and was traded for Nathan Gerby. Uh, Canada has offered us the national team job. I'm not going to take it. Uh, new players. Frederick Anderson signed with Vancouver. What did he sign for? One year at 5.9. Okay. Darren Dietz said he could do better, so let's go ahead and see what he wants. He wants 1.4 at two years, so let's give him an even 1.5. For two years and see if he's okay with that. We'll submit that. All right, so that so we were able to pick up some players. That's nice. So we picked up David Riddich. Adam Pellick will become our new number one left defenseman alongside. He's not going to score many goals. He's not an offensive defenseman by any means, but uh, but he is a tough, physical defensive defenseman. 6'3", 218 pounds. Um, uh, and he's still growing. Still has some additional potential, I guess. So... Uh, I think that's going to be a good pickup for us. And then Eric Stahl will become our second line forward, or second line center, rather. Um, Charlie Coyle will become the third line, and we'll go from there. So it's July 5th. Uh, we need to go to July 6th. Let's go ahead and sim ahead today, see if we can pick up Dietz and... Uh, see if uh, see where we land in terms of uh, draft position. I guess that's what we're waiting on next. All right, so here comes. Oh, does he still not happy with us? Are you kidding? So they've now offered him three point one six over two years. All right, we're starting to get. We don't have a ton of money, so I think we're just going to back out at this point. Um, and that will remove the offer. So we've got some money for free agents still, which will allow us to potentially take on some salary. Um, um, mojo. Hmm. Potentially take on some salary during the season if we need to make another free agent signing. Or maybe... I mean, no one's offered Ovi a contract yet, so... That could be something we take a look at with some of our money left. Uh, let's see. Any signings of interest? Wish you could sort this by total. Looks like David Riddich's contract might be the largest so far. Yeah. A couple of three-year deals for some veteran defensemen. Jake McCabe, David Savard. All right, well, let's take a look at the draft lottery. So let's... Right now we're sixth, so let's see. Carolina, Islanders. Ooh, Sabres moved down up the spot. Arizona, Anaheim. Nashville, Montreal, the Rangers. Ah, we're going to pick seventh. San Jose, Ottawa, New Jersey, Edmonton. Wow. Colorado is going to move from 13 to number one in the draft lottery. That is crazy. So we're going to pick seventh, which is like the worst possible place because there were really five or six players that uh, – that I was looking at that, that I wanted to land for this one. All right, so it's time for the rookie draft. So let's get in and let's get started. <coughs> so here was my plan. My plan was to hope was was to hope that I could land Power, Hughes, Johnson, or Gunther. Those were the four that I were that I was looking at. My guess is that one of or all of them will be gone by the time it gets to me at seven. So we'll go one at a time until it becomes my pick, and then we'll see what happens. Ken Johnson goes first. Nikita Chibrikov goes second. He was 
slated to go 10th. So a bit of a stretch there by the Dallas Stars. Owen Power goes third to Edmonton. Luke Hughes goes fourth. That Michigan Wolverines team is just stacked. Four, uh, three of the top four picks all came from the Wolverines. All right, next pick is Carson Lambos. So we are going to get either Brant Clark or Dylan Gunther. If both of them are there with our pick, I may try to move back one. So let's just see what happens. Okay, so Brant Clark went, which means Gunther, Dylan Gunther is going to be our pick. I know I said I wanted to go defense, but you get an offensive talent that looks like this. Scored 85 points in 68 games for the Edmonton Oil Kings last season. Um, our scouting is pretty confident. We're at a C that he's going to reach it, though. That's the one concern I have, but uh, potential to become an outstanding player. I want to look at anybody else. Atsurati is a little bit more raw, but has the potential to be just as good. Colton Dock, Mason McTavish, Joshua Roy. No, I think Dylan Gunther is the play for the Boston Bruins with the number seven pick. Overall, I can't believe Colorado finished first. You have Kent Johnson and Nathan McKinnon uh, down the middle for that team for the next decade. All right, so let's let's keep going through the first round here. And um, if there's somebody we want, kind of midway through the first or towards the end of the first, we might see if we can trade up. So let's see. Colton Doc goes to the Rangers at eight. Mason McTavish to the Canadians at nine. Cole Sillinger, Nashville at ten. Chaz Lucius to the Ducks out of Minnesota. There goes Atsurati at 12 to Arizona. Matt Beneers, another Michigan uh, Wolverine. That's four Wolverines in the top 13 picks in this draft. Jesper Walstead, the first goalie, goes to the Islanders. Jeremy Wilmer out of BU to Carolina. Chaka, Chaka, Chaka probably is somebody I'm looking at, but is he going to fall? I mean, there's still some good, look at all these one and a half and then either three and a half or four star. Let's keep going. Fabian Lysel to Tampa at 16, Joshua Roy to Vancouver at 17. I think what I'm going to do is I've got three defensemen here that, I've, that I'm keeping my eyes on. Cheka, Schmidt, and was it just two? Yeah, Cheka and Schmidt. So when one of those guys goes, we may try to see if we can move up to take the other one. Although Schmidt is only a, we're only a D that he's not going to reach that potential. So he might be a, what would they call a safe pick? Kukkonen, Michigan Tech. All right, so I think I, I kind of want Cheka, but I don't want to give up a ton to get him. That's kind of the thing. So let's just keep going. Simon Edvinson, Philadelphia. Sam Samos, Samuskevich from the Chicago Steel goes to the Detroit Red Wings. There goes Chaka to the Blackhawks at 19, at number 20. Hmm. Bulldog might be a nice pickup. Yeah, Bulldog and Le Heru are the two I guess I'm looking at next. Stankoven goes to St. Louis at 18. Kuhlemans out of Wisconsin to the Blue, ja Blue Jackets. Kyle Kukkonen out of Michigan Tech to the Wild. Othman to Calgary. 
25. Trevor Wong out of Kelowna to Washington. There goes Baldock to the Maple Leafs. So I think... scored three goals. He's an offensive four, but he only scored three goals last year. Willing to learn. Gets injured a bit more. All right, so who is the number... Who's got the number 27 pick? Winnipeg. So we're picking at 37. So let's see if we can make a trade with Winnipeg here. Move up. Winnipeg, I want Winnipeg's first round pick. Bruins, can I get away without giving up our second? Did you take a, I mean, I, it's far too weak, yeah. I mean, I th I'm gonna have to probably give up this number two pick. And would you take the second and the fourth? I have to give up more, okay. So is there a player on my roster, or is there somebody that... Because I'd love to keep that second. So is there anybody that we've got the rights to that I'd be willing to give up? I'm thinking somebody either that we haven't scouted or somebody who we're not confident that he's going to reach whatever that total is or whatever is his scouting rating is. So Riley Duran in a fourth for your first. Would you take that? It's too weak. What about Curtis Hall? It's too weak. I bet we've got some good young offensive talent here. I like that. Too weak. What about now? What if I offered the fourth now? Interesting offer, but I have to increase it a little. What if I do this? You think that they will probably accept that offer, so can I get back that? You don't think they will accept that offer. Can I get back this? Two week. All right. So, all right. Let's just see if they'll take that. Oh, come on. You're killing me. Um, all right. So, Hall and Riley Duran. You think they will probably accept that offer? I'm not sure I'm crazy about this. But, oh, wow. Okay. I guess I just have to give up the. I'm gonna have to give up the second. I'm gonna have to do that. It's still not enough. Did you take the seventh? All right, you guys are asking me for too much, so let's go to the next pick. Okay, they took Isaac Rosen. All right, so who's got the 28th pick? Vegas. All right, so let's go to Vegas now. Vegas Golden Knights, we want their first round pick. And we will give up our third. And we'll try the same deal and see if it works. And Hall, well balanced offer. Interesting, but I have to increase it a little. And Duran, interesting, but I have to increase it a little. All right, so if we do this and then we give them the second. Oops, that's not what I want to do. The second, they'll probably accept that. Uh, Golden Knights, can we take back a third? You don't think they accept that. Hall in a second for their first. 
Nope, they won't take that either. So I'm going to keep going. I'm not comfortable giving up that much to move up eight or nine spots. Simon Robertson. So we still have these two guys here. I'd like Eklund. He's pretty, looks like a, I mean, the, the ratings are, are solid. Um, we still have Roman Schmidt. So let's just keep going. There goes Roman Schmidt to Florida. Okay. So who's got the 30th pick? The Kings. So let's try the Kings. Now we're only moving up seven spots here, so it really shouldn't be a... shouldn't take a ton to pick this up. And the rights to Curtis Hall. I think that they probably accept that, so let's look at their draft picks now. Let's see if we can get back a fourth. Too weak. Yeah, I only need to move back seven spots, and I don't want to move. I don't want to give up any more than that to only move back seven spots. There goes Luke Middlestead, Sasha Pastuhoff, Tuomala to the Wild. The Wild had back-to-back picks there. There goes Eklund at 33 to Vegas. All right, so now we got a decision to make. The Heru is the best, I think, is he going to be the best option for us? And these guys are both E's, so we don't know anything about them. I don't know how we don't know anybody anything from this 20-year-old out of Ohio State, but we don't. Um... We got a one star, three and a half star here in Cole McKay. Yeah, I gotta move up to get LaRue here. I, I don't want to take any other chances. So Dallas at 34. What do we gotta do to move up three spots here, guys? Dallas. Uh draft picks. Wait. Huh? It does say Dallas, right? Who's on the board? God damn it. It said Dallas. I went to Dallas. They didn't have anybody listed. All right. That sucks. Let's see if... Well, as long as we're doing this, let's see if we can make a trade with Vegas and pick up Eklund. So pick up Eklund, see if it'll let me do this. Usually they don't like to trade players that they just drafted, but we'll see. So if you give them a second and Curtis Hall you think that they will probably accept that offer. All right, so if they'll take it, does that mean we can get more out of them? Well-balanced offer. Interesting offer, but you have to... Let's try the fourth. You think that they will probably accept that. All right, cool. So we're going to give them our 37th pick, um, and we're going to get their 35th pick. We're going to give them Curtis Hall, and we're going to get a fourth. So finalize that deal. Perfect. Eagles just fired Doug Peterson. That's not surprising. All right, so let's go back to the draft. All right, so we now pick uh, in the third. So we're just going to go ahead and sim pick ahead until us. All right, so McKay is still available. We got a couple of one-and-a-half-star uh, older players here, Konstantinou, Toporowski, and Simino. Um... Cameron, why not at age 18? We got Tristan Lennox, an 18-year-old goaltender, and Cole McKay. Cole McKay plays for Sault Ste. Marie. Develop into a good player. I'm looking for one of those players that says this person may have untapped potential that 
other scouts may have missed, but that's kind of what I'm looking for here. But I would like a defenseman, to be completely honest. Not that, I mean, at this point, you're drafting based on ability. You don't draft based on need. So, uh, Anton Olsen, Robert Kalisti. He's an overager at age 20. Cameron Wynott at age 18. Defensive defenseman, plays for Halifax in the queue. Um, defensive defenseman, same skill level as Brandon Carlo at 30 points in 64 games as a 17 year old. I think Cameron Wynott is going to be that number three pick for the Bruins, get ourselves a young defenseman, defense prospect. Let's pick until human. All right, McKay is still there, so I think that might be our first fourth-round pick as an overager, Cole McKay, a 20-year-old. All right, so we got our another pick. Oh, are we, oh, we go back-to-back back here in, in the fourth. We have number 99 and 100. I think we're going to go the overager here in Billy Constantino. I'm going to bring him right to Providence and use him as a backup. Pick until human. We'll go to the fifth round. So risky suggestions would be Caden Cole, 19-year-old Oliver Suni, Cameron Tolnai, Carson Dick, looking for somebody who's got some 13s in there for ratings. Another over-ager defenseman here, 20-year-old out of Sault Ste. Marie. We've got another fourth-round pick. That's right, we got the fourth-round pick we picked up from Winnipeg in this draft. Luke Toporowski. I will go after him because he's got some offensive chops. Go to the next pick. I think we go Kalisti as well. I think we're going to go... Our fourth round is for the the uh, the over-agers here in, in round number four. Round five. Do we take a chance here in round five? Go with Nicholas Zabinay out of BU? I think so. We don't know anything about him, but the water bug, 5'11", 161. Then from there, Raymond's Vitalins out of Vermont. Sure. Where are we now? We're in the seventh. So this is our last pick. Theo Roche. Yeah, that looks good. Do I not have? Are we done? Oh, we must be done. Okay. All right, we're done. All right, so I'm going to sim ahead a little bit. We're going to – actually, you know what? I will be right back, guys. Uh, hang tight. All right, guys. We're back. I just had some lunch. And we're going to continue. So the draft is done. Um, that's the draft order. We picked up our deal here. Curtis Hall and a second for the fourth round, for a fourth round pick, and the rights to William Eklund. Uh, draft review. Oh, this is neat. Columbus. They're saying the Blue Jackets had the best draft, followed by the Blackhawks and the Sharks. And the Wild were selected as having the worst draft, and they had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They had 13 picks. So the Blue Jackets took Carson Kulamans, Tristan Lennox, Alex Giese, or Giese, Stefan Holiday. Dimitri Kostenko, 
and Kale Vaisenen, or Valsenen. <coughs> the Blackhawks with Cheka, Prokhor Poltapov, Liam Gilmartin, Sean Sherigel, 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 I guess, v- Vili Koivunen, and Cole Huckins. Colorado picked up Kent Johnson with that first pick. The Stars took Chibaroff. And Owen Power went third to the Oilers. So here's the upcoming draft class. Shane Wright right now selected to be the number one pick. Currently plays in the OHL for the Kingston Frontenacs. 17-year-old. Uh, yeah. So top prospects for n- next year's draft. That can't be right. Because Lef- Alex Le- he- Alexis Lafreniere already plays for the Rangers. Is this just top prospects? Okay, that's not right. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to take a look at our unsigned. These are our draft picks that we haven't signed over the years. And take a look at, (coughs) excuse me, if there's anybody that we want to bring in. Um, So basically anybody who is uh, one star and under, we're just going to leave them be unless they're... um, rights expire so someone like Quinn Olson uh, his rights expire at the end of this year so we either need to sign him or he becomes a uh, 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 free agent so I think it might be in our best interest to see if Quinn Olson is interested in signing three years $700,000 42 375 if he's in the minors I'm fine with that Submit the offer. Bring Quinn Olson on. Uh, I mentioned these guys, Constantino and Toporowski. Bring them on and stick them in uh, Providence as some overagers. I think we're going to do that. Constantino. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> all right. So... Toporowski, Constantino, and Olsen will all be with Providence next year. Now we get into some of the interesting ones. Eklund, who we've got some pretty good ratings on, um, although his rights expire next year too. I don't quite understand how that happens. But because of that, we're going to sign him. I'm sure somebody can tell me what I'm missing. Um Please do in in the in the uh, in the comments below. Let me know what I'm missing here. We just drafted him. I'm not sure why his uh, his rights expire at the end of this season. Um, and then we get into the three big ones: Beecher, Genther, or Gunther, and Newhook. Um, Newhook, I I kind of want to leave him, let him kind of marinate, I guess, for lack of a better term, for another year in uh, at BC. Um, we still don't have him scouted for some reason. Um, and because of that, I think I want to leave him uh, for his junior season at BC. Um, Beecher, Beecher, I, uh, he's a two-way forward. He's not going to score a ton of points. He was almost a point-a-game guy, point guy for Michigan last season. Um, right now comparable to Trent Frederick. I think we leave him... Wait a second. Let me look at something. Is it here? No, where is it? It's here. Uh, None of these guys are due to expire yet. Yeah, I mean, he's... Where is he? Beecher, 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 right there. Alright, so yeah, he's still... There, yeah, signing deadline. This is what I wanted to look at. Um, so we have his rights for another five years, just like we have Newhook for another five years. So I think all three of them, 
I'm going to let them stay where they are for the current season. Newhook, Olsen, and Gunther. Let them all stay, uh, as well as Beecher, for that matter. Oh, we had to call up, right, we had to sign Olsen's. But Newhook, Gunther, and Beecher, we're going to let them stay where they are for another season. Um, Let them develop in their respective leagues and with their respective teams. And... Yeah, because I mean, we have some, some free agents upcoming that we have to deal with ourselves. Uh, first and foremost, Charlie McAvoy. He, we're going to need to re-sign him. Vakaninen, we should be able to bring him back relatively cheaply, so let's just do that and get that out of the way so we don't have to worry about him. Patrice is up at the end of this year. Ferguson, let's bring him back as well. Uh, Stadnika. He's got to get some time with the big club this season to see what he's capable of. Uh, so we will we'll let him play out some of this season before we offer him a new contract. McAvoy and, and uh, what does he want? He, I mean, I, we're not going to let him go. So, um, you know, I mean, three years at 7.9 is expensive, but it's probably fine. Patrice wants one year. At, yeah, I mean, what's he making right now? problem is we're going to be out of money so we might have to think a little bit about this but we don't have to sign either of them yet so if we look at our salary obligations um forward wise we lose nine million because we're going to lose stall we're going to lose patrice defensively we're going to lose carlo and mcavoy although they're both rfas so we might sign charlie and let Carlo see if he can get a an offer someplace. It doesn't really happen that much, but um, nobody down here. Dominic Bach is still signed for another year. Okay, so we're not in terrible shape um, contract-wise. This Charlie Coyle one could come back to bite us in the ass long-term. Um, but we're not signed long-term really for anybody. That's going to get expensive, Pasternak in a couple of years, but we'll cross that bridge. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead to, um, I guess, the beginning of training camp, and we'll see if there are any final moves or if there are any trades we want to make, and we'll go from there. So I will be right back. All right, quick stop over here as it is time for the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies but we got some emails so let's take a look uh looks like all of the people that we all of the unsigned players that we went after have signed with us vakanainen signed a contract dylan ferguson signed his contract so we're set there johan larson for ryan mcleod arizona getting younger there Picking up McLeod for the 28-year-old defensive uh, forward, Johan Larson. Colorado. Valerie Nishuskin for Sean Shergel. Shergel? Jurl? Shergel? Shergel. We'll go with Shergel. And then Edmonton, Matt Zuccarello for Caden Cole. We've got, again, the top picks in the upcoming draft. Shane Wright looking like a pretty solid five potential ability forward. Uh, so let's look at the Hall of Fame induction. It's kind of neat the way they did this. You can see uh, all of the nominees, Boris Mikhailov, Marco Tulola, Jan Latavla, Pierre Turgeon, Jeremy Roenick, Bernie Nichols, Vincent Dampus, Rod Brindamore, Daniel Adverson, Doug Mons, Sergey Gonchar, Matthew Schneider, Theo Fleury, Dave Taylor, Brian Propp, Gary Suter, Roman Hammerlick, Alexander Mogilny. I believe I voted for Mogilny. Turjan, Ronick, and Alfredson, I believe is who I voted for. So we'll see what happens. We'll see who gets in. Alexander Mogilny, Pierre Turjan, Jeremy Roenick and Bernie Nichols gets in. So McGilney, um, 19-year career, 
what, about 700 games played. Had his best seasons with the Sabres, of course. Also played for the Soviet Union. Pierre Turgeon played for six different teams. Was a very, very good offensive forward. Everybody knows Jeremy Roenick, Blackhawks and Coyotes, and Bernie Nichols. Uh, Oilers, Kings, and Sharks doesn't have his time listed as the Oilers here, but uh, played for some of those high-powered uh, Oiler and Kings teams. I believe he was actually in the trade with um, Wayne Gretzky. So, yeah, those are some of the players. Let's take a look at – can we look at there? We can. Awesome. Alex McGilney, 92-93, uh, 76 goals in 77 games. High-powered goal scoring forward. Finished his career with the Devils. Pierre Turgeon played forever, started his – pro career in 1987 with the Sabres, finished his career in 2007 with the Avs. He was a, almost a point-a-game guy up until his last few seasons. 82 points uh, for the Blues in 2000. 132 points in 92. That was, a, that was the year that McGillney had 76 goals, so a lot of points scored in the 92-93 season. Jeremy Roenick, Blackhawks and Coyotes. Um, wow, I forgot he played for some of these other teams. Philadelphia, one season with the Kings, went back to the Coyotes and then played, finished up with the Sharks. I completely forgot about that. But his time in Chicago, you that three straight seasons of 100 points, four straight seasons of 40-plus goals, 513 career goals for Roenick. And then Bernie Nichols doesn't say like i said i believe he was included no I, he, I thought he was included in this deal to edmonton apparently i was wrong but started his career with the kings uh went to the rangers oilers devils blackhawks and he finished up with the sharks as well a lot of points for bernie nichols over a point a game 88 89 scored 150 points with the kings so those are your Hall of Fame uh, inductees. So we're going to continue to sim ahead. No deals have been made. I haven't uh, haven't made any trades as of yet. I don't suspect I'm going to. We may take a look at things right before training camp, um, but nothing yet. So back in a second. All right. It is September 1st. It is time for training camp. So let's take a look at our emails quickly. Uh, people rapidly adjusting. That's good. Trade between Los Angeles and Dallas. Martin Furk for Nicholas Daig. Kings and Jets. Meh. Braden Holpe traded from the Canucks to the Blackhawks for Alex Debrinkit. Wow, what were the Blackhawks thinking there? Alex Debrinkit for Braden Holpe. Wow. Colorado and Vancouver. Alex Ovechkin signs contract with the Chicago Blackhawks. F only $5 million. We could have gotten in on that. August scouting update. Shane Wright still at the top of the list. And our training camp development report. Uh, we had some people get worse. <laughs> As to be expected. Uh, Eric Stahl is down to a three star. But if he can give us 40, 45 points... I will take that. So, all right, let's take just to quickly take a look at free at the free agent center and see if there's anybody left that we might want to peruse, as it were. These guys are all in tryouts. We got we don't have a ton of money. We only have four million dollars left. So, can we? Let's take a look here. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. Let's go back to McAvoy. Money remaining, salary cap. Now this is starting next season. So we might have to make some moves, but he wants 7.92. So if we go three years, 
Let's just start at seven five. Because I mean, he won't it, he won't take it, but it'll bring this number down. Yeah, see, he already drops to to seven six. So let's do that. Okay. So three years, $7.6 million for Charlie McAvoy. We're going to have no money whatsoever. Um, so we're not going to be able to make any. In fact, we might have to. And we're not going to have to. We're not going to have to cut anybody. But we are going to have to. We got a big roster here, 28. We got to cut this down some. So, Frank Hoos can go to Providence. Berglund can go to Providence. Constantinou can go to Providence. Gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defensemen. That's fine. Um, Olsen can go to Providence. Toporowski can go to Providence. Actually... Yeah, we'll send him to Providence. We'll send Eklund to Providence. And then we're going to go to Providence and we're going to call some people up. I'm going to call up Stadnika. Swayman has moved up to one and a half star, which is nice. We're going to call up Kuhlman. So we got a pretty stacked team down at down in down in Providence. We got some good young players hoping Dominic Bach can get a little bit better here. Actually, he's 21 already. Let's call Bach up and give him a shot. What are these guys not happy about? Contract, new team, wrong level. If I send him to the Gladiators, does that make him feel better? New team, wrong level. Let's take a look at Atlanta. Is he better? New team, wrong level, wrong level. So he thinks he should be in Boston. I'm guessing. Right? Oops. Yeah, he thinks he should be here, but he's only one star, so he's going to start in Providence, and that's just the way it is. All right, so... <clears throat> We're going to keep Bergeron. We're going to keep some of our veterans undressed as it were for the preseason we know what we're getting out of them we don't want to we don't want them to get hurt we don't really have any old defensemen though so um i got a one more forward pasta and i'm just gonna let the ai Create the lines, that's fine. And what we'll do is we will sim through the end of the preseason. We'll set our roster, we'll set our lines, we'll set their, um, what do you call it, their roles, if you will. And then that will be the end of the episode. So I'll be right back. All right, we are back. It's a couple days away from the start of the regular season. We have an interesting player on waivers. We'll take a look and see who that is in a second. Um, start with the bad news. Uh, I had uh, Stahl not playing uh, because I didn't want him to get hurt. Well, Trent Frederick ended up getting hurt, so I put him in. And where are we going? roster injury list uh and Stahl ended up getting hurt so he's out for the next two to three weeks so uh thankfully he won't be out too too long but yeah he got hurt so if we look at waivers let's see who the interesting player is on waivers well, there's a couple of them jake bean dennis chalowski cam Deneen. oof um we got to make a play on at least one of these players, right? At least one of these young players. Jake McCabe is on waivers, but he's hurt. David Savar. Ugh, man. Bean is an offensive defenseman that we've lacked since losing Krug. Do we make a play for Jake Bean? I think so. And Sam Montenbeau, and we'll make him our 
backup. Yeah, we make him our backup goalie because he's better than Vladar at the moment. So we'll put in claims for both of those guys. All right, so let's take a look at our roster. Actually, let's sim ahead a day and see if we are able to pick either of them up. So yeah, we will set our um, set our lines, set our roles, um, and we'll call it an episode. And so what we'll do in the next episode will be we'll play opening day against whoever that happens to be. Um, so we added them both. Good. We got uh, Montenbeau and Bean. Um, opening night is against the Devils, so we'll play that game, and then we'll sim ahead and play some other game, and we'll, we'll go through that first month. So all right. So here comes roster setup. So Dan Vladar is going to go down to Providence. Oh, he's got to go on waivers. That's fine. Montenbeau's better. So Riddich and Sam Montenbeau will be our two goaltenders this season. Uh, Trent Frederick is out. He's day-to-day, -day, right? Yeah, he's day-to-day. -day. Um, Carson Kuhlman is going to go down to Providence. He's going to go on waivers. We, gotta, we have to... Send one more player down. How did Bach do in... Will it show preseason? Seven games, two points. He was a plus one. Okay. Can we look at... Preseason. All right. So who struggled in the preseason for us that played? Bach, Pellick, Vakaninen, Stanika with two points. Wagner at five. All right. So Trent Frederick at one and a half stars. Can go down to Providence. Okay, we'll place him on waivers. That's fine. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Um, what are we doing here? Info. All right. So... We have 19 players dressed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight defensemen. So Clifton and Lauzon are going to get Neg, Dabin, and McAvoy. So we're going to go. Are we going to go with eight defensemen? No, we're not going to go with eight defensemen. But who gets benched? Sinitian. All right. So we got Sinitian, Clifton, and Lauzon. I'm getting a phone call, so let me buzz that, and I'll call them back later. Of course, I never get phone calls until I start streaming, and then, or until I start recording, and there we go. All right, sorry about that. All right, so we have. Do I, I don't want to go with Clifton and my zone is. Not as good. I think Clifton's better across the board. So we're going to place Lausanne on waivers. So there is our. Oh, we got to call somebody up. That's right. Providence. Uh, anybody here that has to be called up? No, but I think. Frederick. I don't think I can unwave him. So I'll have to, once the season starts, or once we get through this day, I will uh, call either Coleman or Frederick back up. They're not going to be starting right now. So, All right, so let's just AI create lines and see if it does it right. So Bergeron, Pasternak, Marshawn, Coyle, Kasha, DeBrusque, Corrali, Smith, Texier, Stadnika, Wagner, Bach. That looks... Pretty correct to me. Pellick and McAvoy, Carlo and Bean, Grizzlick and Vakaninen. They did a pretty good job setting this up. That's basically what I would have done. Um, so we'll see how Texier does on that third line. Uh, do we want to make any changes to any of this? Make him an up and down winger. Uh, counter attacking forward. I don't want. I don't think I wanted. Is he okay with that? Yeah, he's okay as a counter attacking forward. Coil is a power forward. I think it's fine. And DeBrusque is going to be an offensive player, sniper. Or what's the difference between a dangler? No. 
Sniper's fine. All right, so the third line, Texier, Corrali, and Smith. Counterattacking forward. Corrali is a power forward. I think it's fine. Oh, he's a grinder as a 16. Yep, we're going to have him as a grinder. And Smith is fine as a power forward. The fourth line, Bach. Bach and Studnika on the same line. That's either going to be really, really good or really, really bad. And we got we got Wagner there to help out defensively, though, so that'll be good. <sighs> Pellick, McAvoy, Bean, Carlo. All right, let's look at power play. Uh, where did Bergeron go? You took Bergeron off the power play. That's not going to work. Uh, DeBrusque. No, I want to do that instead. Because I want him, yeah, Texier at the point. Um, Coyle and Pasternak. Bergeron and Marshawn. Penalty kill. Bergeron, Kasha, Smith, Wagner, Coyle, Corrali. I think Corrali needs to be up there. Pelik and Carlo, Vakanainen and McAvoy, Grizzlick and Bean. It's Vakanainen. He's still not quite there yet, so I think I want to do. Yeah, I think that's fine. McAvoy. No. I want to do that. Carlo, McAvoy, Pelik, and Vakanainen. Bergeron and Coil. Bergeron and Coil. Man, doesn't this game know anything that Bergeron and Marshawn have to be together at all times? That's just the way it's supposed to be. And then we'll go Coil and Pasternak. Coil and Pasternak. All right. Goalie starts. Uh, stick with the starter. Back up. We're going to give Montembeau some good opportunities. Uh, back to back. Rested. Cool. So let's look at some of the other stuff really quick. Let's look at our depth chart. Uh, so we've improved um, our defensive, our goalie depth, uh, bringing in David Riddich to be our starter, Sam Montenbeau as our backup. Uh, Pavel Fran Kuz will be a nice third goalie in case we need someone. Swayman, Ferguson, uh, Swayman and Ferguson are our future. Kaiser and Vladar are organizational depth. Defensively, uh, McAvoy, Pellick, Carlo, Grizzlick, Bean, and Vakanainen uh, with Connor Clifton as our seventh. Um, and then we have some... some we're, we're not very deep at defense, so we will need to address that at some point. Constantino was an overage drafter this year. Timmins we picked up uh, at the trade deadline last year. Kalisti was a draft pick this year. Mason Lowry. Um, the ratings are pretty good, but he's still only one star. Uh, left wing. Uh, we, we've got a pretty solid left wing core, especially if Dominic Bach can deliver offensively. A um, couple of good prospects. Quinn Olsen, still four and a half star. Going to start the year in Providence. Luke Toporowski uh, was another overage draftee this year. Center, we're loaded um, between prospects and what we have. Bergeron and Stahl, when Stahl comes back, he'll plug into that second uh, second line center. Charlie Coyle, Sean Corrali will be three and four. Jack Stadnik is going to start off at center, but will probably move to the wing once Stahl gets back and Corrali moves down to that fourth line. Eklund, Newhook, and uh, Kuntar as our prospect centers. I'm really excited about those guys. Eklund, we traded up for uh, to get him from uh, Vancouver, or not from Vancouver, from Vegas in the draft. And then right wing, we're in good shape as well. Pasternak, Kasha, Smith, and Wagner. Sanation as depth. Coleman as depth. Uh, Dylan Gunther, John Beecher as um, uh, some immediate prospects in the next year or two with Cole McKay still a year out or so. Dylan Newhook, our number one prospect. Dylan Gunther, Quinn Olson, Jeremy Swayman, William Eklund, Jake Bean, who we picked up off waivers. And then in the upcoming draft, we've got our first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. We also have Colorado's sixth, which we got last year in the Newhook trade, and then our seventh. So 
Uh, we have some trading chips if we look at our finances. Um, Stahl is unrestricted at the end of the year. Bergeron's unrestricted at the end of the year. We did sign Charlie McAvoy to that contract extension. Um, starts next season, 7.6 a year. Carlo is an RFA. Um, so we are currently at $65 million uh, in terms of cap space next season. Uh, that should give us enough money to bring Patrice back and um, a couple of our, our young RFAs. It may mean the end of Brandon Carlo. Um, we'll have to see how, how the rest of these guys do. If Pelic is uh, solid defensively, if Jake Bean and, and Vakanainen come around, um, we'll be in, in decent shape there. Uh, we've got our starting goalie until our prospects are up and ready. Um, Swayman and Ferguson. So uh, we will have to re-sign Swayman after next season, but uh, starting probably next year, one of these guys could be up, which means Montembeau could be trade bait, but we'll see how it goes. That's still a ways away. So that is going to do it for this episode. It was a long one. Uh, I really wasn't expecting it to take this long, being that it was just the off season, but it took quite a long time. Um, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you would have done anything differently. If there's anything you want me to take a look at that I haven't, please let me know. You know, if there are any teams or players or you know transactions or anything that I haven't looked at, let me know. I'll take a look at them. Uh, but until we talk again, everybody take care now.